Yo! It's no secret that one of the best parts of NASCAR is watching the crashes. But as much as you want to avoid crashing in real life, there are times that NASCAR drivers actually crash on purpose. As with all of my videos, I had to create a quality list of these moments. There are three primary reasons you would ever want to crash on purpose in NASCAR. The first one being, to get a caution. Cautions in NASCAR serve as field resets. If you find yourself on the short end of the stick, creating a caution could allow you to catch back up to everyone else. Crashing on purpose allows for the potential benefit of the driver in question, or in some cases, their teammates. Oh, that's a teammate! Think of it in the sense that in specific situations, it would be smart for an NBA player to miss a second free throw on purpose for an underlying benefit, a chance that his team gets the rebound and scores off of it. If you're an up and coming NASCAR driver watching this video, I'm not saying to ever try crashing on purpose to get a caution, but hypothetically speaking if you were going to, you likely won't even get away with it. Before we proceed further bros, allow me to quickly mention our channel partner, Flow Racing. Flow Racing is the best subscription based service to watch NASCAR Roots Racing like the ARCA series and Wheel and Modifieds. They also have more dirt series than I can even possibly count on both my hands. For $150 a year, equaling out to $12.50 a month, you can get access to racing 24-7. That's even cheaper than an HD Netflix subscription. To get access to the upcoming NASCAR Pinty Series race at Sunset Speedway on May 14th, subscribe to Flow Racing using my special link in the description. Now let's head on back to the video. When Carson Hosevar spun his truck out before pitting at Las Vegas, NASCAR caught onto it and held him in the pits for one lap. I included this spin in a previous video, but I had to mention it again because it's funny how obvious the intentional spin was. If Cotton 4K was a NASCAR moment, no doubt this would be it. The gloves tell the whole story. Some instances of crashing on purpose are a little bit more planned. Clint Boyer had a famous incident labeled Spingate, an organized spin to manipulate the race and get his teammate Martin Truex Jr. into the chase, giving him a chance to win the championship. Ryan Newman was about to win the race, and if he did, Boyer's teammate Truex would not have made the chase. Ryan Newman was only going to lose if a caution happened, because this would catch the rest of the field back up to him. Boyer created this caution almost directly on command. The code word, or excuse, appeared to be when Boyer was asked if his arm itches. And your arm's starting to hurt. I bet it's hot in there, itching. Yeah, I don't know either. The best way to know that this was intentional was that he smashed the gas pedal, which would make it impossible to save the car in that situation. Just like the way this didn't work for Carson Hosevar, Clint Boyer was also caught crashing on purpose to get a caution, and NASCAR took Truex out of the chase as a result. Junior, you were behind the 15. Uh, what did you see? Uh, he just uh, spun right out. It's the craziest thing I ever saw. The thing just came right around. And, and I don't know if they could put up his brakes and his gas. Uh, we got all that technology, and uh, but he was hemming around on the brakes and jer jerking the car around. <laughs> and then the thing just spun out. It was crazy. Asking you if your arms hurt or if the car is getting hot, they're going to want to know, did you spin on purpose to help your teammate? No, I think we had a flat tire or something. I mean, we went from leading the race and got back. The second reason you would want to crash on purpose in NASCAR is to get payback or revenge on another driver. Let's say this random guy called Craig slammed into you because he's a pretty clumsy and lousy driver. <sighs> If that gives you damage or hurts your finishing position, you may feel like doing the same thing to him. Sometimes the mentality is that if my boat is sinking, I'll make sure yours does too. A perfect display of this was the move that Matt Kenseth pulled during the 2015 Goodies Headache Relief Shot 500. <clears throat> Not an ad. Matt Kenseth was eliminated from championship contention thanks to this move Logano pulled at Kansas only two races before. By Martinsville, Logano was on a three race win streak and was close to making it four. But here comes Matt Kenseth at more than 10 laps down, coming to prevent Logano from winning the championship. This was a perfect example of, if I'm not winning the race because of you, then you're not winning because of me, which seems pretty fair in my eyes. Joey, are you surprised? <laughs> well. Yeah, here is just a complete coward move, especially for a championship uh, race car driver and race team. Complete coward. That's, I don't have anything else to say. It's a, it's a chicken, you know what move to uh, completely take out the leader when your race is over. And, um, and uh, we're going to get our car back out there, hopefully. A similar move happened in 2017 between Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. Hamlin spun out Elliott for the lead in the final laps of the Martinsville Fall Race, and just like the previous scenario, this played a hand in making it significantly harder for Elliott to make the championship four. When it came to Phoenix, Elliott was more than 35 points outside of the cutoff for most of the day, and needed to win the race to get a chance at the championship. While Chase Elliott's path to the championship four required a win, Hamlin was running third, a solid position to transfer, but Elliott could only do one thing to stop that from happening. Tenth of a second lead over Martin oh, Truex Jr. And there went the tire. The 11 goes into the wall. He's just an absolute hack. 
the final main reason you would ever want to crash on purpose in NASCAR is to try to win the race. This one is going to be the most common, and we see it multiple times every single year. A recent example was Ross Chastain's first cup win at Circuit of the Americas. AJ Allmendinger moved Chastain out of the way on the final lap, and Ross came back to wreck him only a few corners later. This could also fit into the payback category. It's a blurry line, but this one could say it counts for both. One thing is for sure, without this move, it would have been either Allmendinger or Bowman headed to victory lane instead. Oh, he's gonna use... AJ's gonna open it for him. Moved him! Moved him. AJ moved him. Is he gonna get Chastain moved back? comes back. Or are you gonna kidding? have to move them both? Oh! He is! Oh. And around oh. goes Allmendinger both. off the bumper of Chastain! John Hunter Nemechek knows quite a bit about crashing on purpose for the win, because he's been on both ends. In 2016, Nemechek pinned Cole Custer against the wall coming to the finish at Canadian Tire to win, and that's when we learned that Cole Custer would be pretty skilled if he played defensive tackle. Another recent moment was the finish between Nemechek and Ty Gibbs at Richmond. Gibbs used Nemechek as a brake pedal in the final corner, but come on, every NASCAR fan knows that eight wheels turn better than four. We didn't wreck him for the win, um, Robin's racing, but uh, if I would have been in the same spot, he would have done the same thing to me to get a win. My favorite moment of wrecking on purpose is when a driver goes all out for the win, and not by wrecking another driver. At Kansas of 2008, Carl Edwards was running what is now known as the Kyle Larson or Tyler Reddick line. In other words, as close to the wall as humanly possible. In the final set of corners, Jimmy Johnson wanted to steal Edwards' line to dump dirty air onto his car, but that's when Edwards changed his entry and drove to the bottom. He shot up to the wall and got stuck in it. It's commonly referred to as a video game move done in real life, because in a video game, this might have worked. But to go all out and scrape the right side of your car in an effort to win the race, what more could you ask for in a driver? And what's Jimmy Johnson do here? He goes to that high side. Carl Edwards is going to go to the bottom. There we go. <laughs> oh, Carl, oh, right by him. It's with a car stick. Here comes Jimmy Johnson. He's in, back. He's in the wall. Can here he comes get it Jimmy. Off the wall. We're back inside now. And that's why Carl Edwards was my favorite. Any chance he had to make the finish exciting, he did. Last lap. Traffic ahead. Kyle Busch the leader. Look at this. Carl Look at Edwards this. right Look at there. This. Moves him wow. to win it. That leaves me with just one question for you. Take any two drivers in NASCAR history. Which two would create the best, most chaotic finish that fans would go absolutely crazy over? Let me know in the comments and maybe include your ideal track for it to take place. Just by making it to the very end of the video, you've helped this channel so much already. And for that, I can't even begin to ask you to subscribe. But the option is always there in case you want to help the channel reach 75k. As always, I hope to see you back here for the next video. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle, for sure. It makes me want to dribble dribble, you know, riding in my fear. You really have to see it. Six feet two in a compact.